Today we take a look at part two of the multi-part series on algebraic expression for the grade nine CAP students here in South Africa, though these rules can also be applied uh, to students all over the world. And we are going to look in part two at simplifying using the rules of indices. First of all, we need to know what rules apply for grade nine. And this is first rule. If the bases are the same and they are multiplied with different powers, the powers are added together. A to the power of M times A to the power of N equals A to the power of M plus N. Our second rule states that if the bases are the same and they are divided with different powers, then we subtract the powers from each other. A to the power of M divided by A to the power of N equals A to the power of M minus N. Our third rule states that if we have a base with a power multiplied by another power, we multiply those two powers together. A to the power of M times N equals A to the power of M times N, almost like the distribution rule. Our fourth and fifth rule work in tandem with each other, and it states that X to the power of zero equals one, and x to the power of minus 1 equals 1 divided by x to the power of 1. In our first calculation we will be performing, we are going to have a look at x to the power of 2 times x times x times x to the power of 4. First thing we need to see is that all our bases are the same, yet the powers are different. We have 2 to the power of 2, we have 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 1, and then 2 to the power of 4 again. We're going to apply the following rule. We're going to, just to show you, I've just written out uh, the implication that x uh, is to the power of 1 and x is to the power of 1. And by using our first rule, if the bases are the same, we add the powers together. We are going to add all our powers together to 1, 1 and 4 to get to our answer. So simplified, this becomes x to the power of 8. In our second example, we have 4x to the power of 2 times 6x to the power of 4. Our first step is to Basically, just remember that we need to get like terms together. So we're going to multiply 4 with 6, and then where the bases are the same, 2 to the power of 2 and 4, we're going to add our powers again together using our first rule. We are going to get 6 times 4 is 24, and then x2 plus 4 which will give us 24x to the power of 6. In our next example, we have 12x to the power of 2 times y divided by 4x times y to the power of 2. And what we're going to do first is we are going to just rewrite the whole thing. You don't have to rewrite it like this at all. This is just to show you the steps that I'm going to take. And we're going to use our second rules on both sides. So we're going to um, divide 12 by 4. And we are going to subtract our powers because we are dividing with the same bases. So we have x to the power of 1 below the line and we have x to the power of 2 above the line. So we are going to subtract the smaller from the larger. And that's going to eliminate the x below the line. And we are going to do the same for the y squared or the y to the power of 2 below the line. We're going to subtract the smaller one, which is at the top, and that's going to eliminate that one. And then when we simplify, we will get to 3x over y, because 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. And we have an x to the power of 1 left above the line, while we have a y to the power of 1 left below the line. 
Let's have a look at our next example. Our next example states that 50y to the power of 2 divided by 15x to the power of 3 will equal the following. First, let's just rewrite just to show that we are going to divide by 15 above the line to eliminate the 15 below. And then we have a problem here. We see that our bases are not the same. They are not like terms. They are unlike terms, meaning that we can't subtract the powers from each other because y is something completely different than x in this case. And simplified, we are only going to get 2y to the power of 2 over x to the power of 3. This is a common mistake that most students make sometimes. So please be attentive to the fact that the powers are not the same. Our next example is in parentheses or brackets 4x to the power of 3 times y and then we multiply this by the power of 2. First let's just write out that 4 is to the power of 1 and y is to the power of 1 as well. Our next step will be to multiply or distribute the power outside the brackets to each one of these uh, parts of the term that is given by us. So we're going to distribute the to the power of 2. We're going to multiply 1 with 2, 3 with 2, and 1 with 2. And then we will see this is the third rule that we've used. And this will give us 4 to the power of 2, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 2. Simplifying this further, we are going to get 4 to the power of 2, which is 16, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 2. And that will be our answer. In our next example, we'll have a look at, in parentheses or brackets, 2x to the power of 2 times y, all multiplied by the power of 2 times, in parentheses or brackets, 3x to the power of 3 times y, all multiplied by the power of 2. I'm just going to show again that in expanded form, we will have all those powers of 1s, and we are then going to distribute the outside powers into uh, each bracket using our third rule which will then give us 4x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 2 in brackets still times by 9x to the power of 6 times y to the power of 2. Now in this step I skipped uh, just writing 2 to the power of 2 uh, because 2 to the power of 2 we'll see as, we see as 4 and 3 to the power of 2 we see as 9. But our calculations are not done yet. We still need to work out the last part, the last and final step. So in our next step, I'm going to add the like terms together or the coefficients together, not the like terms, the coefficients, in fact. And then I'm going to add the powers together of the same bases, x to the power of 4 and x to the power of 6 and y to the power of 2 and y to the power of 2. And then I'm going to see that I'm going to get 36x to the power of 10, y to the power of 4. In my final calculation I'd like to share with you uh, is quite a complex one. We have the following. We have in parentheses or brackets 2x to the power of 2 divided by 3y to the power of 3, all multiplied by the power of 2, times above the line we have parentheses y to the power of 3, multiplied by the power of 3 and below the line we have 2x to the power of 3. Our first step in this equation is to use our third rule and distribute the power or indices outside of our parentheses or brackets in order to get rid of our parentheses or brackets. And when we do this we'll see that we get 4x to the power of 4 divided by 9y to the power of 6 times y to the power of 9 divided by 2x to the power of 3. 
our next step will be to multiply the two fractions together in order to get one fraction. And this is done by basic multiplication. Doing this, we will get 4x to the power of 4, y to the power of 9, divided by 18x to the power of 3, y to the power of 6. Next, by using our second rule, we will subtract the smaller powers from the larger ones for the same variables x to the power of 4 minus 3 and y to the power of 9 minus 6. And finally, we will simplify further by finding the highest common factor between 4 and 18, which in this case will be 2. And we will then have our final answer, which is 2xy to the power of 3 divided by 9. And this is the furthest we can simplify. This is quite a tough one. There's a lot of things that we need to do and remember. But following our basic rules, we can easily get to the correct answer.